Rotator Cuff Tear The rotator cuff is a group of muscles and tendons that help you lift and rotate your arm. The rotator cuff has four muscles, namely subscapularis, infraspinatus, teres minor, and supraspinatus muscle. These muscles connect at the head of the humerus, forming a cuff at the shoulder joint. The tendons located at the end of the muscles may tear, causing pain and limit the mobility of the shoulder and upper arm. Rotator cuff tearing is frequent in aged people, athletes, or people who engage in substantial lifting activities. Causes of a rotator cuff tear include degeneration, trauma, and old age. Causes Injuries or regular wear and tear from daily use are the major causes of rotator cuff tears. The majority of people suffering from a rotator cuff tear are the elderly and those who do heavy lifting using their hands. However, anyone can suffer from a rotator cuff tear, mainly due to injuries or physical trauma. There are two types of tears, partial tear. It is also known as an incomplete tear. The tendons get damaged, but they are not entirely severed. Complete tear. It is also known as a full thickness tear. In this case, the tendon is completely severed and it gets a hole. Symptoms. You may experience pain in your upper arm or shoulder due to a rotator cuff tear. However, the pain might not be an immediate symptom, especially when the cause of the tear is due to degeneration. Common signs of a rotator cuff tear include difficulty when stretching your arm to full length. You are avoiding sleeping on your side due to pain on your shoulder. You are experiencing shoulder weakness when you try to lift an object. You have inflammation in the shoulder and upper arm area. Diagnosis. Your doctor will perform a physical examination to help diagnose whether you have a rotator cuff injury. The physical exam may include raising your arms and rotating your arm at the shoulder. If these movements cause you to feel any pain, he will conduct further tests. The doctor may perform a magnetic resonance image MRI scan to confirm the diagnosis. An MRI can show the size of the tear and its location within the tendon. The doctor can tell how old or new the damage is because of the clarity of the MRI images. Other tests that are performed include an x-ray scan and an ultrasound. Non-surgical treatment. In 80% of cases resulting from rotational cuff tear, the doctor recommends non-surgical treatment to help relieve pain and promote healing to the affected area. These non-surgical options include administering anti-inflammatory medication such as naproxen and ibuprofen. These drugs help to reduce pain and inflammation. Resting and limiting movement of the shoulder by using a sling to help the shoulder remain still. Injection of a local anesthetic to help relieve pain and inflammation. Physical therapy and strength training exercises. These exercises help strengthen the muscles and tendons, preventing further damage. Surgery. If conservative treatments do not work, your doctor may recommend surgery. Large tears, which are more than three centimeters and recurring rotator cuff injuries, are also treated by surgery. There are three surgical options, open surgical repair, arthroscopic, and mini open surgery. Your orthopedic surgeon will inform you of the different options and which suits you best. When performing an arthroscopic repair, your doctor will make small incisions on your skin, then insert a tiny camera called an arthroscope. The camera displays these images on a screen, and your doctor can guide the surgical instruments and repair the torn tendon. This procedure allows for a shorter recovery period. The open surgery repair involves making a large incision on your shoulder, typically three or five centimeters long. The surgeon detaches the muscles so he can have direct access to the tendon. Shoulder replacement surgery also follows this procedure. Recovery. Recovery after surgery may take one to six months, depending on the damage and procedure carried out. There are three stages to recovery after surgery. In the first stage, the arm is immobilized by using a shoulder sling to heal the muscles. The second stage involves passive exercises to help regain motion. In the third stage, the arm is exercised to restore movement and strengthen it. 
The recovery process may be slow, but a patient must remain committed to recovering fully. Complications. A small percentage of patients who have undergone rotator cuff surgery experience complications. These complications may result from blood loss, problems related to anesthesia, or not following the doctor's instructions. These complications include infection. After surgery, a patient is given antibiotics to reduce the risk of contamination on the open wound. Sometimes an infection may occur that may require the patient to be on prolonged antibiotic treatment or even undergo another surgery. Therefore, it's advisable to keep the wound clean and take your medication as prescribed. Stiffness. You may experience stiffness on the shoulder after surgery, but this should improve with continued physical therapy exercises. Tendon re-tear. There is a likelihood of a re-tear if the patient does not exercise proper care. In most cases, this happens if the patient engages in vigorous activities using the affected shoulder when it's not entirely healed. A second surgery might be required to repair the damaged tendon. Nerve injury. During open surgery, the muscles are detached so the doctor can reach the rotator cuff. Following this procedure, the nerves that activate these muscles may be injured. However, with proper care and medication, they heal on their own. Rotator cuff tears are prevalent due to degeneration in old age. Treatment of a rotator cuff injury includes surgery, physical therapy, resting, and ice treatment. Proper treatment should be followed to ensure the patient recovers fully. A rotator cuff tear can be prevented by doing regular shoulder exercises and resting the shoulder if you experience any pain. Always use correct posture when lifting heavy objects.